In today's video, I'm going to discuss what I believe are some of the most essential traits that any event photographer should have. Should we do it? High five. That was the weakest high five I've ever gotten from you. The first trait is simple perseverance. You need to be prepared to have a lot of ups and downs as a freelance photographer. I think the best way to transition and prepare yourself for this is by maintaining some sort of stable income, like a part-time job or even a full-time job and slowly transitioning. But if you go all in like I did, you're gonna be terrified at times because you will never know, will the work come in? And you'll work your butt off, but it's not like 10 hours working on blogging leads to work necessarily. It will eventually, but there's no direct correlation or immediate results. And so you find yourself in a lot of valleys and a lot of peaks, and you just need to prepare yourself for it. Any working photographer will confirm this with you. Even when you've really established yourself, for no reason, sometimes you might not work for a while and you have to just be prepared. Attention to detail is another really important trait. As event photographers, sometimes we have to shoot formals and we need to be able to catch things like cell phones in someone's hands or lipstick on their teeth. Even cell phones in the pocket can create a really large bulge that can be unsightly. And I promise in 20 years from now when we're not using cell phones, it will really date the photo. So you really do need that. Of course it can be trained, and the more you get good at all the other things, like all the technical aspects of photography, the more your mind will be freed up to really noticing those details. Next, I'd like to talk about more of a series of traits that are all very related. That would be your ability to read a room, your empathy, your pattern recognition. So, as an event photographer, there's a lot happening in front of you, and we don't want to just say, oh, there's stuff happening, and randomly take photographs. We want to identify key moments. We want to identify where there's a lot of energy in the room. We want to be able to predict when someone is going to smile or have a big reaction. And all of that comes down to your ability to read people, which I believe is very much tied into your openness and empathy. This is something I am naturally very high on trait-wise. Um, I always have been, I've always been good at connecting with people, reading people. But unfortunately, this is not the most learnable trait. Of all the things I'm going to talk about today, having empathy is probably something you have or you don't have. I'm not saying you can't learn it. It's just going to be more challenging than learning something like shutter speed and aperture and how those work. But no matter what your natural abilities are, the most important thing is that you learn to really read a room and make meaningful images. Whatever it takes to get there, that should be your goal. Your goal should never be to just raise the camera to your eye from a different angle and take a shot and thinking you're getting great coverage. You're not. <laughs> you're just getting different angles, but you're not getting good coverage. Next, we can talk about the simple ability to be at the right place at the right time. This is not luck. This is your ability to know where to be and, to how, and more so how to get there. So it's great if you're able to read the room, you can identify key moments, but if you can't be where you need to be for a variety of reasons, whether it's your health, your inability to move quickly, um, et cetera, then that's a problem. Ultimately, great coverage comes from great positioning. It really does and we need to be where we need to be. I made a whole video on this. I've talked about how using a fixed focal length can really help you practice this ability, but it's not a requirement. You can absolutely make sure you're in the right place and be very mobile with a zoom lens or a telephoto zoom lens. But for practice, I do recommend getting used to just using your feet to getting to where you need to be. I've seen a lot of lazy photographers. I've seen photographers show up with 800 millimeter, 600 millimeter lenses to shoot an event, which meant they were just positioning themselves in the back of a room and just photographing from that one perspective. And that's not really the best way to get great coverage. Maybe it's a good way if you just need one shot and you're done on your assignment, you're it, that's it. But if you're a house photographer, charged with documenting the event, telling a story, that's not gonna cut it. We have to talk about artistic ability versus technical ability. A lot of people see them as a part, where you are a shoot from the hip, creative type, or maybe you're a technical type, and that they don't really coexist. Now, there may be some truth that you do kind of fall into one of the two camps, more inherently you're good at one or the other, but the reality is that you need to be good at both in order to be a successful photographer. If you have a creative vision, but you don't get the technical side of photography, you can't really make it happen. And if you just understand the technical side of photography and you lack vision, you're going to have very 
lifeless photographs that have no meaning to them. The, re the ideal here is that you have a creative vision and you understand how to make it happen technically, but you also understand how the camera sees versus your own eye and that you're thinking in photography terms, not in your, just your own mind's eye. All right, you can have a treat. So let's talk about networking. Everyone knows how important networking is, yet so many people are unwilling to do it. And I'm not gonna set myself apart from those people. I don't like it myself. I find that I really love the work, and so when I show up at a job, I'm fully involved in the work. And I feel like by having conversations with people, I'm taking away from my ability to get the best coverage. However, I have to realize, or I have realized, just as you should, that you're running a business. And networking is one of the macros of really building that business. And if you neglect it, you're not going to succeed or you are hamstringing yourself and you will not be as successful as you possibly can be. It's really important that we don't neglect anything. Very few of us are in a position where we're able to turn down a lot of work. And so more work is always better. So we don't want to pretty much, we don't want to leave any stone unturned when it comes to ways to grow our business. We do want to think about the amount of effort it takes versus the payoff it brings. Um, but networking is very little effort for a lot of payoff. And there are passive ways you can do it. You can do it on LinkedIn, you can do email lists and that kind of thing. But ultimately, I really think that building those in-person relationships are what's going to lead to the most work. The next thing I wanna talk about, I'm gonna kind of clump together, and that would be customer service and understanding your client's needs. You can't be an arrogant artist if you want to be an event photographer. You have to understand that you're delivering a product. Yes, it is creative. Yes, you may have your own artistic style, your own way of doing things, but ultimately what matters is your own client's needs, not what you need to fulfill as an artist. That comes first. And that might mean not always shooting the stuff you really want to shoot. What I typically do is I come in and I have a formula, so to speak, where I know all the shots I need for my client based off of their needs. So that will vary, you know, if the needs, like I've given this client uh, example recently, I, I have a client who owns a very, 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 very large retail space and they need to sell that space to people. And so the events that are held there are really more about selling the space than just documenting the events. So I have to shoot differently than if I were just photographing a holiday party, for example. The importance of your ability to stay calm under pressure cannot be overstated. You're going to deal with a lot of different variables. You're going to deal with things going wrong. You're going to deal with just generally high stress situations. But ideally, your career path is going to prepare you for that. You're not going to be photographing something hugely important for a very large multinational company you're going to build up to that. And I think your ability to stay calm under pressure is going to come down to two main factors. One is your state of mind and two is your skill set and experience. If you really understand this job, you're go not going to get stressed because you're going to know that you're going to have confidence in yourself that you know all the solutions available to you in any given situation. And then you pair that with a mindset and that mindset is pretty much you don't stress out over what you can't control. Stoicism is a great philosophy to follow because it takes it up a notch by saying, not only am I going to accept what's in front of me, I'm going to figure out how to use it to the best of my ability. So if your job gets rained on, how can you use the rain as an example? What interesting images can you make in the rain? That kind of thing. I will tell you that the anxiety that you're feeling early on in your career, I mean, I can't say for sure, but I can tell you in my own point of view, my own experience, that I do not get stressed on the job pretty much ever at all. I'm in my happy zone. It's, I really just give into a bunch of habits and where I just go into some programming, so to speak. I'm still thinking, I'm still coming up with new ideas, new ways to do things, but so much of it is now kind of, um, in the back burner of things and it's just happening. I don't have to think about too much. I'm truly present and I'm not, and my mind is nowhere but the task at hand. Next, let's talk about organizational skills. This is definitely one of the things I had to work hard at. I'm naturally very disorganized. 
I did not have a good starting point. So I had to develop a lot of systems to keep me in check and keep me productive. Sometimes it's difficult because I am a very artist, I am an artist type and so I'm not very steady in the sense that I'm just like every day I wake up in the same mood and I have the same pro productive ability. You know, there's an ebb and flow for me and so I try to embrace when I have a creative like fire and when I don't, I try to be a little bit more lenient on myself or I use these systems that help keep me in check and keep me more productive. What's up, dude? High five? That's not a high five. That's a one paw. Give me, give me a high five. Give me a high five. High five. Yes, I love you. You're my best friend. Don't tell anyone that. I want them to think I have a human best friend. I really believe all these traits are truly important, but I want to give some words of encouragement to anyone feeling down, like maybe they don't have these traits, they're deficient in some, or they don't feel they have the natural ability to develop them. And I'll just say everyone has different abilities and different starting points. And what it matters is that we work to improve upon them. We identify what we're good at and embrace them, but we also identify in a sort of dispassionate way where we're not hard on ourselves. We identify where we're deficient, where we can improve upon, and we try to improve upon those. I'll be very honest with you guys. I'm low, uh, I'm very high on empathy, my ability to read the room. I'm creative, I get the technical aspects. I'm very social and like to connect with people, but I don't like networking. I don't like that whole game and I don't like running a business. Those are the things I had to work harder on. Whereas the photography side, that came very easy. But the business side, it wasn't that it was hard to grasp. It's that I had to get out of my own way as an artist type and say, okay, I am running a business and I do want stability and I do want to travel and I do want to own property in, in very expensive Los Angeles, that kind of thing. So I hope this stuff helps you. Good luck on your journey. I appreciate you watching. If you want to support this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I put bonus content, but more importantly, I put things like contracts that I use, um, how to write a photography pro proposal or sample proposals, that kind of thing. They're all going up on Patreon now as well so that I can really help you on your journey. Thank you again. Good boy. Watch this, guys. Look at the camera. Look at me. You're a good boy. You're the best dog on YouTube right now. Unless someone else is playing a, a puppy video right now. That might be competition for you, old man. All right, next, <laughs> let's talk about, I don't know what we're talking about. Sit. High five. Sit. Turn. Turn. The hell is that? Turn. All the way. All the way. Sit. Down, roll, all the way, good boy, high five again. I love you, pal.